This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on planar kinetics, impulse and momentum. It's from chapter 19.1 through 19.2 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to develop formulations for the linear and angular momentum of a body and apply the principle of linear and angular impulse and momentum. Activities include some applications, will define linear and angular momentum, discuss the principle of impulse and momentum, and then do some problem solving. Here you see a swing bridge. It opens and closes by a motor at A that applies a torque M to the bridge. So the bridge rotates about the vertical axis at the center. So you can use the principle of impulse and momentum to calculate the angular velocity of the bridge if you know the moment. You notice how the bridge has most of the mass at the center and as it goes towards the edge it gets smaller. Why do you think that is? Well it reduces the moment of inertia of the bridge about A. Here you see a Sharpie tester. As the pendulum swings downward its angular and linear momentum increase. By calculating the momenta at the vertical position we can calculate the impulse the pendulum exerts when it hits the test specimen. Here you see the space shuttle. It has several engines that exert thrust on the shuttle when they're fired. And if only engine A is fired and applies a thrust T, about what axis will the space shuttle rotate? Well, since T is above the x-axis, it will tend to cause the shuttle to rotate about the x-axis. That's assuming that the thrust is in the yz plane. So let's define linear and angular momentum for a rigid body. So the linear momentum, which is designated by L, is equal to the mass times the velocity of the mass center. And you can see that here. And note that you can break up the linear momentum into x and y components. The angular momentum is denoted by H. And that's equal to the mass moment of inertia about the mass center times omega. And remember that the direction of the angular momentum is perpendicular to the plane of rotation. So in our case, it's coming out of the board. So let's go over some special cases. The first one we'll cover is translation. So when a rigid body undergoes a rectilinear or curvilinear translation, its angular momentum is zero because omega is zero. So the body can be translating in a straight line or in a curved line, but as long as omega is equal to zero, the angular momentum is going to be equal to zero. And the linear momentum, of course, is still the mass times the velocity of the mass center. The next special case is rotation about a fixed axis. So we can write the linear momentum as the mass times the velocity of the mass center and the angular momentum about the mass center as mass moment of inertia about the mass center times omega. It's sometimes convenient to compute the angular momentum about the center of rotation O, and in that case, it will be I G omega plus R sub G cross M V sub G, where R sub G is this vector from O to G. These are all vector equations. And the last case we'll cover is general planar motion. So in this case, the body is translating and rotating. So the linear momentum is mass times the velocity of the mass center. And angular momentum about g is mass moment of inertia about g times omega. Now if you want to compute the angular momentum about some general point A, you can do that by ig omega plus m velocity of the mass center times d where d is the perpendicular distance between A and the linear momentum vector. Now we'll move into section 19.2, which is the principle of impulse and momentum. So as we did in the case of particle motion, the principle of impulse and momentum for a rigid body is developed by combining Newton's equation of motion with kinematics. I'm not going to go through the derivation. Uh, it's very similar to what I did for particle kinetics, or you can refer to the textbook. The resulting equations allow a direct solution to problems involving force, velocity, and time. So when you see a problem with forces, velocities, and times, and there's two states, then it's most likely an impulse momentum problem. So let's write out the linear impulse linear momentum equation. So the linear momentum at state 1 plus the sum of the integral over time of all the forces 
is equal to the linear momentum at state 2. And remember the linear momentum is defined as the mass times the velocity of the mass center. The angular impulse angular momentum equation is the angular momentum about the mass center at state 1 plus the sum of the integral of the summation of the moments about the mass center over time is equal to the angular momentum at state 2. And remember, angular momentum is mass moment of inertia about g times omega. This top equation is two equations since it's, since it's a vector equation. You can apply this in the x and y directions. This next one is a scalar equation. So you basically you have three equations, so you can solve for three unknowns. So that previous relationship is shown graphically here. You can see in this first part here, the initial momentum diagram is the mass times the velocity of the mass center. That's the linear momentum. And the angular momentum is ig omega 1. Plus, now here's the impulse diagram. You can see all the forces being integrated over time and all the moments being integrated over time and the weight as well. That equals to the final momentum diagram which is the linear momentum at state 2 plus the angular momentum at state 2. So to summarize, if motion is occurring in the xy plane, the linear impulse linear momentum relationship can be applied to the x and y directions and the angular momentum angular impulse relation is applied about a z-axis passing through any point for instance, the mass center. Therefore, the principle yields three scalar equations describing the planar motion of the body. So let's establish a procedure for analysis. First, as always, establish an XYZ coordinate system. Draw the impulse momentum diagrams for the body. Compute the mass moment of inertia as necessary. Apply the equations of impulse and momentum. That's one vector and one scalar equation or three scalar equations. If more than three unknowns are involved, you'll probably have to turn to kinematic equations relating the velocity of the mass center and the angular velocity omega. So let's do an example. Here we have a 300 kilogram wheel which has a radius of gyration about its mass center O, which you see here, of 0.4 meters. The wheel is subjected to a couple moment about O of 300 newton meters. Find the angular velocity after six seconds if it starts from rest and no slipping occurs. So the fact that time is included in the problem formulation should make you think impulse and momentum. We have two states starting from rest and the second state is six seconds later. So therefore we should be able to apply the angular impulse and momentum relationships and some kinematics to solve this problem. So here's the impulse momentum diagram. Here you see the angular momentum and the linear momentum at state 1. Add to that all the forces acting on the body integrated over time, which you see here, plus the moment integrated over time is equal to the final momentum, which is the angular momentum about the mass center times omega 2, and the linear momentum, the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 2. So since this wheel rolls without slip, I know that the velocity of the mass center is equal to r times omega. So note that point A, the contact point with the ground, is the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So it'd be very convenient to apply the impulse and momentum equations about that point as opposed to the mass center. So we can say that the angular momentum about point A at state 1 plus the sum of the integrals of the moments about point A integrated over time is equal to the angular momentum that's about point A at state 2. So it started from rest, so the initial angular momentum is 0. We have one moment being applied, so I'll note that by m. So I'm integrating from 0 to t here, so this is moment times time is equal to, now I need the angular momentum about point A, so that's equal to the mass moment of inertia about point G times omega plus r times this linear momentum vector. So it would be m times v sub g times r. Well, I know that the velocity of the mass center, you see here, is r times omega. So I'm going to rewrite this as i g omega plus m times r omega times r. So let's write that down again so we don't forget it. It was moment times time 
is equal to i dot g times omega state 2 plus m r squared omega state 2. Now the maximum inertia dot g is uh, mk squared, where we're given the radius of gyration. So m times t is equal to the mass times k dot o squared times omega 2 plus m r squared omega 2. This is equal to m omega 2 times k naught squared plus r squared. So omega at state 2 is equal to the moment times the time divided by the mass times k naught squared plus r squared. So let's fill in those numbers. Omega 2, the moment was 300 newton meters, the time was 6 seconds. That's divided by the mass, which is 300 kilograms, times k naught squared, which is 0.4 squared, plus r squared, r is 0.6. So omega is 11.5 radians per second. Here's another problem. We have a 300 kilogram wheel. It's mounted on a 20 kilogram cart, and it's at rest. Then the cable wrapped around the inner hub of the reel is subjected to a force of 50 newtons. The radius of gyration of the reel, about O, is 250 millimeters. Find the velocity of the cart and the angular velocity of the reel when time is 4 seconds. So again, time is a parameter, you have velocities, thus impulse momentum is recommended. So here's the impulse momentum diagrams. We have the total weight times time the applied force times time, these are all the impulses, and the normal forces times time. And it started from rest, so the initial momentum is zero. And the final momentum is the angular velocity times the mass moment of inertia about the center of the reel, and the linear momentum is 50 newtons times the velocity, state two. So first, let's apply the linear impulse and momentum formula for the system here. So I'm gonna establish a coordinate system, x and y. Now, the velocity takes place in the x direction, so I'm going to apply the equation in the x direction only. So it's the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 1, plus the integral of the forces integrated over time, that's in the x direction, is equal to the mass times the velocity of the mass center at state 2. So it started from rest, so the initial linear momentum is 0, so 0 plus the force is 50 newtons, and it's applied for 4 seconds. That's equal to the total mass, so it's 20 plus 30, the mass of the cart and the reel, times the velocity of mass center at state 2. So the velocity of mass center at state 2 is 4 meters per second. So this is the impulse momentum equation applied in the x direction for both the reel and the cart. Now since the cart isn't rotating, it's only the reel that's rotating, the reel is the only thing that has angular momentum, so I can apply the angular impulse momentum formula to just the reel. So here's the impulse momentum diagram. It started from rest, so the initial angular momentum is zero. Now the reel has two forces. It has the, the weight and the applied 50 newton force. So that equals to the angular momentum of the reel and the linear momentum as well. So let's apply the formula so it's I about O times omega 1 plus the integral of summation of moments about O integrated over time is equal to the moment of inertia about O times omega 2. So again, we're applying this to just the real. So omega 1 is 0, so that's 0 plus now the moments about O, the weight passes through O, so that moment is 0. So it has, uh, this 50 pound force has a moment of 50 times the radius of the inner real, which is 0.15 meters times time, which is 4 seconds, is equal to I about O, which is mk squared, so it's 30 times 0.25 squared times omega 2. So omega 2 comes out to be 16 radians per second. This concludes chapter 19.1 through 19.2 on impulse and momentum for planar kinetics. Next up is chapter 19.3, planar kinetics conservation of momentum.